Well hey there, my name's Natalie, this is Hey It's A Good Life, and I'm so glad you're here because today I'm gonna show you how I built this greenhouse on wheels. Okay, how do I get out of this? It's dirty, it's very sturdy, just testing it out. Before we hop into things, I want to tell you a little bit about this project, then I'll show you how I built it, and then I'll share with you some things that I'm going to modify going forward. I've been wanting a greenhouse for a really long time. I sketched it out on paper, and then I found all the materials I needed on this side of the road, randomly, the day after I sketched it on paper. So, kind of a wild story, um, and it's definitely one I'm not going to forget. One of many that have been happening this month, and um, definitely encourage you to go watch the video of the story behind this greenhouse. It's a pretty radical story, and it's a testament to a lot of things, a lot of good things that are happening in my life right now that I really attribute to God and Him just hooking it up and wanting to be an awesome dad and do good things in my life. So if you haven't seen that video, I definitely say go watch it. I'll link it right here. If you haven't seen that video, I definitely encourage you to go check it out. So without further ado, let me share with you how I built the greenhouse. All right, so here's what we're working with. We've got two by fours cut to three feet by six feet. We're gonna make some frames and slap those between some two by fours. Then we're gonna pitch a roof, add some paneling, put some wheels on this bad boy, and we're good to go. Easy, so easy, right? <laughs> and here's a side view of how we're gonna support all those frames and make it really sturdy. Here is a little before action for you guys. This is that reclaimed wood and look at how perfectly it fits all of my growing trays. I just couldn't get over it. I love visualizing things and this got me really pumped for the project. Now, something I've learned is that you only get one body so you gotta take care of it and that means wearing eye protection and ear protection before you get started on any projects that could be kind of loud. Now, the first step to this project was framing up our shelves. And I like to do that on the flat surface of my garage floor using these corner clamps that are on loan to us from our neighbors. After that, I went ahead and just pre-drilled a bunch of holes in the corners, and then I drilled in our deck screws, and I got my star bit stuck so many times. If you have any tips on how I can avoid this in the future, please leave it in the comments down below. I am dying to know. <laughs> Now comes the fun part, building the four posts. To do this, I used clamps, then I went ahead and pre-drilled and drilled one deck screw into the lowest frame or shelf, and then I went ahead and built the rest of the frames or shelves. And I went ahead and made sure that I did this within the confines of those four external posts, just to make sure that everything was super level and even and straight, because that's obviously really important if you're building any kind of structure. Then it was time to start mounting our frames onto the inner supports of two by fours cut to 24 inches. Now at this point, it's really important to make sure everything's really, really level and straight and in there really well. So I went ahead and went around a bunch of times making sure that everything was level and making any little fine tune adjustments as needed. in more two by fours cut to 24 inches and slid in our third shelf. This was seriously so gratifying at this point to see the structure coming together. <laughs> if there were any adjustments to be made, I went ahead and made those and again, went around making sure that everything was super level and straight. to add the casters and to do this I just traced the holes of the casters with a sharpie and then I pre-drilled and I drilled some deck screws in. To make sure that the deck screws didn't slip through the holes of the bracket I used a washer to keep it in place. <sighs> Once Tommy helped me roll this into position, I realized that this thing ought to be a lot more sturdy. And so to achieve that, I went ahead and cut some more two by fours to about 36 inches in length and slammed them into place. That way it's not just the shelves that are the main support, but that the shelves also have this sense of internal support as well. And I made sure that I cut it really, really close to size just so that I wasn't relying on screws to hold it together, but that there was almost a sense of pressure in between the shelves. Does that make sense? 
Then after that, it was time to add any additional supports. Here, I'm adding what will support the future roof. And then I'm adding here these cross supports, which will help support the quarter inch mesh that we're going to add later on. Then it was time to start figuring out how we were going to pitch the roof. And I have never done any kind of roof work at all. So I relied heavily on Tommy and his math skills to help me figure out how we were gonna do this. Like, there's this way of doing it, is that wrong? Well, then there's this other way of doing it, is that wrong? Well, then there's this other way of doing it. Like, is that wrong or is that right? I cannot believe how much math we've done today. <laughs> The long story short is that we figured out how we could adjust our miter saw to make the cuts that we needed, basically at 18.6 degrees, but get ready to hear a little PSA from me because this was totally wrong. abso freaking lutely do not do that. That was so dumb. I was so scared after my wood split or whatever it's called. Don't do that. I don't have a solution. I have a feeling a different miter saw or a, or a different saw in general is the way to go absolutely not the right way to do that after rather incorrectly getting all of our pieces cut to the right length and angle it was time to add the bottom of our isosceles triangle and just double check that the angles met up and once they did i glued them together and i really made sure to get the wood in this end grain because i found that by doing so it allowed for it to adhere really well to the other pieces to allow it to dry i left it on a flat surface which is our garage floor Hello from my ladder. <laughs> I'm really excited that I get to do this right now. I can't believe I'm adding like the final touches right now. I'm so excited. seriousness though I am so impressed I've never pitched a roof before this probably isn't how you actually do it but the fact that this is up this is like the final steps I am like mind blown that I'm adding this and that it looks the way I wanted it to look and that it's sturdy and man this is just such a testament to what happens if you do your best to learn, you put one foot in front of the next, you get creative, you use scrap materials, you practice, like, man, I'm just, I'm blown away. I'm sure I've said it a million times at this point in the narration, but I'm not a professional. Nothing you see here is necessarily professional, but I think this is gonna work. And I just, I want so badly for other people, but especially women, I want them to feel empowered. I really hope that if me conquering this behemoth of a project, slow and steady, one day at a time, shows anything, it just shows what's possible if you show up and give it your best effort and ask for help along the way. I mean, I've definitely asked for help during this project and um, I am, I'm blown away. So. I hope this is an encouragement to anybody watching that if I can do this, you could definitely do this. Eventually, it was time to add the corrugated plastic. And before doing that, I went ahead and made sure that any supports I had added along the way officially got screwed into the sides. Even though they were in there pretty tight, I just wanted to make sure that they were in there for real. And then I went ahead and added some backing to the project so that the corrugated plastic would have something to screw into and you'll see what I mean in just a second. To cut the corrugated plastic, I realized it was really handy to use the oscillating tool, or so I thought. I went ahead and used that and eventually I learned it was even handier to use a towel to avoid any kind of like scratching. I was so meticulous about picking out the very best plastic for this greenhouse. I really wanted to make sure it stayed nice looking and so my recommendation to you is cut your plastic on something soft if you can and when you do use 
something other than scissors. Scissors do not work well. You'll see later on in the project that my favorite tool for cutting plastic is actually hedge clippers. And to make sure I cut in a straight line, I just dotted along the top of every hill and then followed that with my oscillating tool. Then it was time to actually start adding the plastic. And to do this, I worked from top to bottom using clamps to help me hold the plastic up. And then of course, you always just wanna be careful that when you're drilling these special screws in that you don't drill it too tight because you don't want to warp the plastic. And you can actually see here that I probably did the top just a little bit too tight. So just make sure that you don't do that if you end up adding any corrugated plastic to a greenhouse. Again, just using the clamps, I worked my way down, making sure to overlap along the way, making sure the top piece was overlapping the bottom piece to keep any water out. Now again, just another little PSA from Natalie. Make sure you protect your skin, you guys. We only get one body, so let's steward it well and take care of it. And I realize that I really need to be using sunscreen if I'm gonna be outside. Also, make sure you stay hydrated because that's also important. <laughs> add some additional support to the roof. So I went ahead and cut this little piece that I could add underneath the roof just for a little bit of additional support. And it's cut at about 18.6 degrees. Once I had that lined out, I went ahead and just measured with a Sharpie on the back and kind of hammered it into position. Once I had all the side paneling on and the roof done, it was time to start visualizing and assembling the moving parts, meaning the doors and the roof. So I went ahead and made some really basic frames and then started to visualize what those frames would look like with the corrugated plastic on it. Once I knew that I had a design that I liked, it was time to basically just glue all the parts together and screw everything in. Now, again, you wanna make sure that if you attempt this project that all your dimensions are spot on. And I went ahead and double, double, triple, quadruple checked my math. And then when it came time to actually get the corrugated plastic on the door frames, I double, triple checked all of my measurements again, just to make sure. I still managed to make a little bit of a mistake, but I was able to correct it. So guys, measure twice, cut once. I've learned the hard way so many times. It's day 792 of this project. <laughs> like I'm kidding, it hasn't actually been that long, but you know the feeling of when you've had to go to the home improvement store like 16 times, <laughs> you're just like, oh my gosh, are we done yet? As you can see, the doors are on. The doors are on, we did that. I did that by myself and it required a lot of finagling and I just didn't feel like getting the camera out to show all the finagleness that was happening okay so i'm not saying that this is the proper way to hang doors by any means but i will show you essentially how i did it by how i assemble the top roof by how i assemble the top roof panels bless you you guys could probably hear that my husband sneezes so loud it's pretty simple essentially what i did was after building the frames i undid part of the frame i put the undid part of the frame kind of peeled the plastic back added the hinge and then once that was attached to the door I hung the door up by clamps and making sure that the door was exactly where I wanted it and level then I went ahead and peeled back the side paneling of the greenhouse and drilled in some screws for the hinge to be permanently secured to so not the most complicated thing in the world but also not how you're supposed to hang doors i'm sure but this is how i'm doing it and it's working for me so far so that's essentially how i got the doors up all by myself and now the roof is built it's time to attach the roof and 
put the quarter inch mesh in and I think I have a greenhouse. So I'm really excited for today. Um, let's go ahead and try to finish this project up. Oh yeah, and handles, we need to add the handles and then I think we're good to go. So this is me assembling the final bits of the moving roof structures. As you can see, I'm using T-strap hinges. I got decorative ones because I think they're beautiful. And um, the trick with this is because the hinge is so wide, it's not a strap hinge, it's a T-hinge. And that means that I needed to extend the inner part of the frame a little bit to be able to hold the hinge. So I had to kind of finagle again, build these little extra pieces to hold the hinge and to make sure that I didn't have any hinge screws messing with the screws that are holding these extra bits in place, I used the hinge as a template to avoid drilling screws into where the hinge screws would have to go. Once the hinge was attached, I reattached the corrugated plastic over the hinge and that did create a little bit of a divot in the corrugated plastic, but I'm not too worried about it. After the roofing pieces were all assembled, it was time to get the piece on the roof that was going to hold the hinge and be the structural support for how these moving roof pieces were going to move. And I ended up using some coal lumber from Lowe's to do that. I, I don't really know the exact dimensions. They're maybe like one by two, maybe a little bit bigger. And yeah, once those were up, it was really easy. It was just screwing in the hinges and that was pretty much it. After that, you guessed it, it was time for some more finagling and I had to find a way to attach our handles to the doors. So I did that by adding these one by twos as support and then I used some scrap wood to attach to the outside. And once that was in, I did make sure it was level just to make sure that you know it looked right. <laughs> um, then it was time to add our hardware. Almost last but not least, I am using, like I mentioned earlier, those hedge clippers to cut the final bits of corrugated plastic off the roof. And I cannot recommend using hedge clippers enough. These were so easy to use, way, way, way easier than using any kind of saw or scissors or oscillating tool. This was my favorite way to cut the plastic by far. After I made that final cut, I went around all the corners and cut off those sharp edges just to be sure that none of us tall people ran into any of those sharp edges. After I cut off those final pieces of the roof, it was time to add those pieces again, but in a different spot here on the roof. So to do that, I just used those clamps pre-drilled and went ahead and drilled in those roofing screws. And this was actually a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be because all I had to do to get the opposite side going to this situation was just flip that corrugated plastic and apply it to the other side. And as the final touches, I added that quarter inch mesh to each shelf and a little bit of decoration. Hello faithful viewer, you have made it to the end of this video. I know this has been a long one, so I just wanna say I appreciate you so much watching this video, seeing it to the end all the way through. You are awesome, thank you so much. When you watch my videos all the way through, it actually really helps my channel grow, so thank you, thank you. And if you haven't already liked this video, subscribed, left a comment, or shared it with a friend, that also really helps my channel as well. Thank you in advance for engaging with me on this platform. I really wanna grow and help as many people set out to do the things that they want to do in this world because dreams are important and vision is important and I believe that God wants to do amazing things through us here on the earth for those of us who are willing to say yes to the vision and step out in faith. So thank you for uh, helping me spread that message out there. I'm going to be adding a thermometer and barometer to the greenhouse which I don't currently have but I'm going to add that and I'm just going to monitor like how hot does it really get, how humid does it really get because this is not a really well insulated building. If you couldn't tell I didn't add the corrugated like squishy, I can't remember what it's called but there's a special thing that you should add if you want it to be basically airtight watertight and I did not add that to my design. 
Now I did that kind of intentionally because here in Southern California, we don't really need it. It's super temperate and I don't need like something in the winter to keep in heat. Uh, I really just needed somewhere that was gonna get enough light to keep my plants and seedlings alive. So I'm not super concerned with it not being airtight or watertight or whatever you wanna call it. Um, but I am gonna keep an eye on the thermometer and humidity using a barometer and thermometer. Also thinking I'm going to add some kind of a mesh screen covering because if I open it, I certainly don't want any bugs getting inside. So I'll let you guys know how that goes. And the last thing, the last thing is the roof. So on a traditional roof, you put this little piece on it. I can't remember what it's called right now, but you put this little piece on it and it keeps it watertight so no water can get in. Well, what do you do when your roof is movable? Um, you don't add that <laughs> or you add it, but you add it like above the movable roof situation. So I imagine that I'm going to make these modifications, film them and show you guys what I'm talking about in a future video. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. Um, let me know if you guys want to see that and I'll show you guys the future turnout of this greenhouse and the modifications that I plan to add to it. Oh, and the last thing about the doors, I also plan to add some magnetic closures. This little handle is super cute and I love it. It does keep the doors shut. However, I would prefer the doors to be even more shut. I was gonna say shutter, <laughs> more shut. And to do that, I'm going to add some magnetic closures. But again, you know, there's only just so much you can allot to each project every month, every budget month. So um, that's it for this month and we'll see how it works. I'm really excited to get some plants started out here and share with you guys how it goes. So stay tuned for a greenhouse update. Thank you so much for watching this video. Again, if you liked it, please hit that like. If you wanna leave me a comment, I'd love to hear from you. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Apparently like 50% of you who are watching these videos aren't even subscribed yet. So subscribe and please consider sharing this video because it helps my channel grow. And I so, so, so appreciate that. I wanna help as many people as I possibly can to say yes to their dreams, start growing food and building things. So thank you in advance for sharing this video. I really appreciate it. All right, that's it. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.